Welcome back to PartyPoker.com Snooker Premier League. Confirmation of our first match. It was Stephen Lee 1, Peter Edden 5. Knocked in a 103 as well in his last frame to get maximum points. The second game, as you can see, from Group A. Selby against Robertson. Let's pick up the action. Just avoided the middle pocket. And now it's not bad. He's got him wrong sided. That's a great shot. This might find an opening here, actually. He's looking to try and drop on this red on the right hand side. Let's just get this. Just avoids the middle pocket. And with that yellow there, he's got Mark snookered on that side. So just going to drop onto this red. This needs, again, good touch. Have to hurry. Well, that's not bad, putting the white towards the uh, the pocket there. Two very similar players in many respects, Robertson and Selby, both hard, compromising match players. But when they're given the chance, they can be extremely heavy scorers. Well, that's a great pop. <laughs> Absolutely clean. One. Could have finished better. <coughs> Just trying to open things up a little bit. My, that's one. Four. That one's available. It's one to the middle. It's all a question of um, position on the colour. Well played. Well, that was unlucky not to finish on Five. the black, but he's still got the yellow. Distance pop from Neil Robinson. He eats those up, doesn't he? Seven. Four pots for seven points. After this, it will be five pots for eight. Hard toil. And he's on the pink this time. Eight. Well, he's having to work hard for these, but he's doing well so far. He's come far enough on this red, but this is the class of these top players, Phil, isn't it? You know, they, they could just make 14. half chances into four ones. This is the kind of frame where a 30 or a 40 break would be powerful currency indeed. 15. I mentioned a little while ago how heavy they can score. Well, last season, Neil Robertson made 54 century breaks in professional <laughs> competition. But he was outdone by Mark Selby, who put together 55, which is a record, an all-time record, by one player in a single season. Of course, with all the snooker to be played this year, one. that could be in jeopardy this year, that record. Who knows? And again, he's just... Gradually weaving these out. <coughs> He's got that red, I think. Yeah, the one just left of the blue there. That goes. Twenty-eight. <coughs> Twenty-nine. Well, so far, this is a, a masterclass in making something from absolutely nothing when he came to the table. Mm -hmm. 
35. Thirty-six. Well, I was about to say this is where the real hard work starts, but it's all been hard work so far. <coughs> well played. <laughs> well, got this one in for the paint. Forty-two. Well, this could finish up being one of those classic breaks something from absolutely nothing. 43. The end could be nigh because although he's on the pink, <coughs> position on the next red from here, extremely tough, as is the pot itself. Yeah, he could possibly get on that red above the blue to the opposite corner, but as you say, Phil, this pink is tough. Oh. Well, shouldn't be allowed. He's got a nice cannon. Deserved it. 49. Mark, numerically, nowhere near the, the biggest break of the evening, but it's the best. Absolutely. It's not finished yet either. Well, imagine if he clears here from where the balls were. This, this would be unbelievable. Well, the pink 56. leaves Mark Selby requiring snookers. I'm sure he can't quite believe what he's seeing. 57. I haven't seen a break like this, funnily enough, since Mark Selby did one in the Championship League against Stephen Lee last year. That was a remarkable clearance. This is right up there with that. 57. He's going to have to uh, rely on a double here, though, to continue. 63. Sixty-three on the frame, Neil Roberts. Well, a century would have been a miracle. It's not miraculous, but it was magnificent. Sixty-three break from nowhere. Robertson draws first blood. Sports Living for Sport uses sports stars and sports skills to improve the lives of thousands of young people in the UK. My dream right now is to be a success both on the court and off the court. My confidence went up loads. The schools taking part receive free visits from a sports mentor. It really despise them to think, actually, I could be that type of person. I'm able to be who I want to be. They just give you skills that take you forward. Watch more inspiring stories at skysports.com forward slash living for sports. This parallel that I'm discovering of people who live in poverty and people who don't. I've only ever lived on the streets, in prison or in hostels. Ross Kemp crosses the line between the rich. How do you answer the accusations that you are a mafia boss? And the very poor. I want to know why poverty still exists in 21st century Britain. The brand new series continues. Ross Kemp Extreme World, Monday at 9 on Sky One HD. Personal injuries. The TV says claim, the press says the whole thing needs to be reformed. But what are the facts? Well, if you get injured and it wasn't your fault, you are entitled to claim. It's not dark or dirty. It's a very sensible way of dealing with the consequences for you and your loved ones. So if you think you have a bona fide claim, call Injury Lawyers for you. We're here to help when people need it most. We are Injury Lawyers for you.
Welcome back to the PartyPoker.com Snooker Premier League. Stephen Lee losing 5-1 against Peter Ebden, who was flying tonight. As you can see, Neil Robertson has taken the first frame against the current world number one, Mark Selby. Let's pick up the action in frame number two. Welcome, everyone, yeah, to this PartyPoker.com Premier League snooker evening from the Bidolf Valley Leisure Centre, north of Stoke, where we've seen some really good snooker, actually, from Peter Ebden. Against all expectations, his mastery of the shot clock was totally surprising. Breaks of 80, 83 and 103 to complete a 5-1 one over extension. Stephen Lee. And as you join us here, Mark Selby is 1-0 down to Neil Robertson, who in the first frame with the balls ridiculously awkward, made a 63 break from absolutely nowhere, Mark Hallett. One of the best breaks I've ever seen, actually. Oh, he's gone in the Foul middle. And a miss. And, of course, Neil, Neil dropped that red in, superb red, dropped the white in behind the black, and uh, well, that's a, well, I'll say out of sorts. He's just missed a fairly straight red into the corner, actually, a couple of minutes ago. Okay. Yep. Trying to clip off the reds. Oh, he's had the, Neil's had the white put back, so here we go again. He's trying to catch the red and go down the table here. Well, he's caught the right side, slightly on the thick side. If you're watching the Premier League this season for the first time, ten of the finest players in the game are involved. They're split into two five-man groups, and with his 5-1 victory over Stephen Lee tonight, Ebden joined Judd Trump at the top of Group B. Now then, is that the kiss from heaven that it looks like? I don't know, actually, if you watch the replay. I know you're thinking about the pink to the middle, Phil, aren't you? But I don't think he's on it. Well, does he think he can kick this in with a little bit of side? He could. He was on it. I was watching the red, it hasn't moved. I mean. Oh, I'm not sure about that. I think he was just questioning whether actually he caught the red on the way through there. He was thinking that he's potted that pink, and well, I don't know whether when he was move, so sort of. Th Paul hasn't caught a foul. Let's have a look at this. Well, I don't think there's anything there. Looks legitimate to me. No, there was no problem at all. Yeah, no yeah. problem at all. That that was Seven. clean. Confusion over contact, whether it was red or pink, harkens back to the Shanghai Masters final last year when Mark Selby was the beneficiary as he came back to beat Mark Williams after that controversial incident. He's not the beneficiary Eight. here. Well, that was very good of Neil there, wasn't it? He, he relied on the replay just to make sure that uh, it was a, uh, you know, a legal shot. But again, 14. Mark Selby in his chair. 15. Time extension. The rules of the Premier League, it's a 25 second shot clock and in each frame you're allowed two time extensions, i.e. an extra 25 seconds. And Neil Robertson taking one here. It's a straightforward enough pot, yes. But he has to work out the, the positional conundrum. That's why he's taking the black. He had more angle on it. Well, he attempted to nudge the red off the cushion, and it hasn't worked out. Twenty-two. He's fluked it. What a bonus that is. And no guessing what the next shot will be. Well, Mark not amused with that one. Thought he'd, that would go. Caught the other red. Well, there you go. Nineteen. 
Neil Robertson, 23. Just moving the side in the room a little bit. Ruthless, as he should be, and there's an extra nuance to that because, of course, by playing the shot in that way, Robertson actually freed pink and black up, which means if he gets the chance to score again here, his life's made easier. Not sure whether this red passes the other one down the cushion. It looks pretty tight. Well, he's had a look at it, but he's looking at the other red now on the left-hand side of the table, so obviously it won't. Just a safety then from this one. Send the red down the, around the table. Going back to that replay a few seconds ago, I feel a lot of that red did go past the one down to the green pocket, but Neil chose to play the safety. Yeah, they did. Well, I think it would. Well, it's not bad now, but just as well that he missed the brown because the red to the middle would have been on, but he also knows he's left one here to the corner pocket. And uh, Neil likes these. He's just checked the potting angle, so he, we know he's having a go at this one. Well, he was a mile away that time. It's not bad, though. These two play such good snooker, it's entirely possible that come the end of November when we're up in Grimsby for the, the playoffs, these two could be meeting in the final. Good cue ball. Yeah, Mark hasn't quite found his feet yet. He's just trying to slowly play his way into this match. It's only, it's only the second frame of six. That's a great return. That was top draw. Can't get better than that. Mark under a little bit of pressure here to play a good shot. Well, he's avoided the double kiss. He needs to avoid the blue. Oh, it's not bad. He will settle for that. debut of both players in the league this season and they know the importance of getting off on the the right foot well especially what we've seen happen with Stephen Lee to play two losses I'm afraid he's got a little bit to do there's been good some good tactical stuff here from these two well he's got the knuckle but he's covered it with the blue
Yes, Mark a little bit fortunate there. This is the 27th edition of the Premier League. And Neil Robertson is trying to become only the second player from outside of GB and Ireland to capture the title. Marco Fu was the champion in 2003, Hong Kong's finest. Six. Well, I don't think he likes that pocket, Phil. He's double kissed the blue in there. He's double kissed the pink. In. I don't think he went in off the blue, to be honest, but uh, it's not been kind to him so far. In terms of leaving a pot on, though, it could have been a whole lot worse. Mm. Just talking there, Mike, about the history of this tournament, and it really does bring out the best in the best of the previous 26 stagings of the Premier League. Ten have been won by Ronnie O'Sullivan, six by Stephen Hendry, and the first four by Steve Davis. Pretty good trio. Again, Mark's caught the middle of jaw, uh, and this time he has left one on. Pretty easy for a left-hander. Well, he still needs uh, one of these reds after this pink. This will put him 44 the lead, the next to red 45 with only 43 on. And I'm not sure he's got uh, a lot of angle on this pink to get over this left hand side of the table. Well, don't tell me he's landed bang in the middle. Can he see this red through the cap? 13. That would be unbelievable. Well, he was sighting it, wasn't he, before he played the pink? Well, I think that was intended, Phil. What a great <laughs> shot that was. It was absolutely perfect. And that was frame ball. Striking the ball, wasn't he? I mean, look at the break he made in the opener. 63 it was superb. And here again, you know, he's, he's just clinched this frame with some wonderful shots. 21. Yes, when you look back on this match, you'll see the first couple of frames and you'll think, well, nothing much spectacular happened there, but Neil Robertson is playing some really good snooker. Neil Robertson, 21 on the frame. It bodes well for him. It doesn't bode well for Mark Selby. Still to get off the mark. That's because the thunder from down under has rumbled into a 2-0 lead. Immerse yourself in another Sky 3D big weekend. On Friday, the 8 o'clock movie is comedy adventure Gulliver's Travels. On Saturday, your favourite characters are back for more family fun in Toy Story 3. Buzz Lightyear at your service. Then on Sunday, it's a family movie with feathers, Rio. Let's fly. Followed by brand new action documentary series, Storm Surfers 3D. Get up close every Friday, Saturday and Sunday with the Sky 3D big weekend. The wait is over. Fight Night Live is back. First up, live from Ali Pali, Lights Out Lee Purdy takes on Gomezindo Carrasco. And top of the bill. The bomber, the bomber is back. Tony the Bomber Bellew against Edison Miranda. Plus, we're stateside as Andre Ward faces Chad Dawson. Let the fight begin. Fight Night Live returns tomorrow, 8.30, Sky Sports 1.
In the Premier League this evening, Neil Robertson is playing Premier Snooker. He's 2 0 ahead of the world number one, Mark Selby. That after Peter Ebden, after a lengthy absence from the tournament, came back storming with a 5 1 win over Stephen Lee. And so what it means is that Mark Selby, in order Thank to gain maximum frame. points from this match, has to Neil win to the break. closing four frames. The way that Neil Robertson's performing, that, Mike Hallett, is a tall order. Yep, I'll agree with that. Mark really needs to get this frame under his belt because uh, Neil could run away with this. That man striking the ball well. Only just avoided the double kiss there. Mark's got tons of uh, experience, he knows what he has to do. Well, he tried to just play a little cheeky one into the middle there. I don't know about you, Mike, but before this year's World Championship, I thought that both players had got a great chance. Then, of course, Selby injured himself during the China Open. We realised he wasn't going to be a contender. We still thought Robertson would be. But he didn't play his best. Nowhere near it against Ronnie O'Sullivan in the quarterfinals mm. and lost 13-10. I think that was the match, wasn't it? And I think Ronnie knew that as well. I think mentally, once Mark had gone, John Higgins had gone, I think mentally he knew that uh, Ronnie thought, if I can get rid of Neil, I can win the title again. And uh, Neil knew that as well. He knew that that was possibly the, the, one of the, the final, should not say the final, but you know what I mean. If he'd have come through that, I think Neil would have put his second title on the board. Yes, could well have done so. Began the match well. Second session, though, made a lot of mistakes and characteristically ragged he was and when you're up against Ronnie O'Sullivan that's something he can't afford to be he's been much better this evening though it's been very good indeed I wonder if Mark can get through to this red just left of the black he's had a quick look at it no he's just playing the safety Well, that's opened up a few. But he'd be a little bit disappointed with that because he hasn't got the cover on this red near this corner pocket. Desperate to try and get back into this match. Just pop the red here and let the rest happen. Just for one minute, I thought he was going to land on the black way, but I don't think he has. I think he'll have to play the blue, but that's still a superb pot from there. Blue into the middle, avoid the yellow and brown. Oh, that's finished nicely. Six. couple of shots there Phil back in Seven. prime position he's looking good isn't he he's looking very sharp indeed he is and it's great to see because he's a he's a good lad Neil Robertson the finest player ever from the southern hemisphere Fourteen. I'm sure Eddie Charlton, 15. looking down, will be very proud of this young man. Funnily enough, I was chatting away to Neil before the start of this match about Eddie because it was the famous occasion, wasn't it, when he passed away that 
extraordinarily, he went up in the world rankings because he was an honorary member of the association. His name wasn't taken off the world ranking list, even though he was no longer with us. <coughs> A few of the members resigned their membership, and so there it was, up the rankings. 23. Very different character, Eddie, to Neil Robertson. But one thing they share, extremely tough competitors. Yeah, great passion for the game. 28. Twenty-nine. I think we could have been a swear box at the end of the arena, Phil. We made a few quid out of Eddie for the few charities, wouldn't we? I think he's okay. Thirty-six. He is. Yeah, it feels he got a slight kick. But just look where the reds are. This this is not looking good for Mark Salvi. Well, he'd be a little bit concerned now because he hasn't really got into this match, and this could be in double quit time three nil. Forty four. And if it is, Robertson would guarantee himself at least one point. 45. 52. Won the Masters 53. at Ali Pali in North London back in January. But it's now been 23 months since he's won a major world ranking tournament. Six of them on his CV. The most recent being the World Open in Glasgow in October 2010. 59. He's won players to a championship oh, event since then. The Good timing there. The bug landed on the table just before he was down. Another second, that might have been a problem. 60. So the pink, a red in the colour, and hey presto, 3 0. And Mike, you have to say this has been top notch stuff. It has. And, you know, and you've got a class 66. player like Mark Selby sitting in the opposite chair. You can do nothing about this. I mean, the first break he made a 63 is superb. I, I mean, when he finished between those two reds 67. in the last frame and to finish off the second frame, but this again, this is this top stuff. You just, you know, you finish up being a spectator. Well, there's some snooker to be played in those two or three months, isn't there? You know, the PTC, the Shanghai Masters, the International, and uh, all of a sudden these guys are sort of targeted in those. Hang on, hang on. Neil Robertson, 72. Well, two snookers required. I think Mark will play on here. If it was in the opening frame, it might not. But with him being two and behind, you can't blame him for coming back to the table. Jeez. One. A bit to do, but he's capable. Well played. And Mark with the shot clock. For Selby, there's extra hope because if he can lay a couple Eight. of good snookers, not an awful lot of thinking time for Robertson to work out the escape, and so maybe a mistake could be forced. 9. Well, again, he's going to have a problem with those two reds near the side cushion. But just get rid of these first, put points on the board. Of course, it's the mark of a great player 
Phil, isn't it, when you've been sat in your chair cold, 16. come to the table, you get a half chance. Let's remind ourselves. I was going to say, Mark still needs two snookers. Didn't expect him to Mark miss that one. 16. No, he's being deprived of table time, and it's shown. He missed a bad red at the start of the second frame, and that one should not have gone astray either. Well, there's the table time, 64% for Neil Robertson. I think it's even more dominating in terms of points scored, 208 to 39. And then there's ball spotted. Over 4 to 1 in favour of Robertson. The total's 59 to 14. And highest break, yes. Selby's 16 so far. It can happen to the best of them. Yeah, and then Neil's getting the little nudges as well. It's made all the difference with that cue ball finish in there. Mark under it here. I don't know if you can see the left hand one. You can't see the straight one. Well, that was all eggs in one basket there, and I'm afraid this frame is over. Yeah, frame conceded, frame Neil Robertson. Yes, the quickest frame of the match so far, but nothing's changed in terms of the destination of it. Robertson goes 3-0 ahead. This is an important announcement. Millions of people have been missold payment protection insurance. Banks have now admitted they must repay an estimated £8 billion, most of which still remains unclaimed. If you've taken out a loan, credit card or mortgage in the last 10 years, then call Claim for Refunds now and we'll tell you within minutes if you could be owed thousands. Claim for Refunds is now winning over £1 million every week for people like you and Mr Barr. Claim for Refunds got me £10,800 pounds. I'm delighted as I didn't have the time or confidence to do this myself. And Claim for Refunds could win your claim in just three weeks. There are no upfront fees and if we don't win your claim, you don't pay us a penny. Guaranteed. Simply log on to claimforrefunds.com now or call 0800 044 3079. That number again 0800 044 3079 or text PPI to 86688. This could be the most important call you make this year. Call now. At the PartyPoker.com Premier League here in Stoke. Neil Robertson is in dominating mood. He leads Mark Selby 3-0. That, after Peter Ebden, was superb in overcoming Stephen Lee 5-1. Frame four, Mark Selby to break. If you're just joining us tonight, let me just quickly tell you about that Peter Ebden match. We were all wondering how one of the slowest players in the game... Mr. Methodical would cope with the shot clock. Well, he coped just fine, thank you very much. Breaks of 80, 83 and 103 in the closing three frames. And now Stephen Lee's hopes of making the playoffs looking extremely forlorn. Well, and again, Neil's been a little bit fortunate there. He caught that red all on the wrong side, too thick, and uh, he could have easily left this red for Mark in the left corner. He's got this one to the left middle, though. Well, the big question, of course, here for Mark Selby is can he get something out of his match? You know, it's a tall order. One. Made him <coughs> three frames on the bounce to gain a point. I 
I wouldn't say he hasn't gone into this match. He hasn't been able to, has he? He's had a well, he's had a couple Six. of misses, but like you say, Phil, it was lack of table time, really. Seven. Well, if he can get the draw, it would feel like a win. Yeah, but we know that this guy won't give up. He'll be thinking, Five. OK, I can't maybe get a win here, but I can certainly get a point out of it. 13. Could go into the pack here. Opting to drop it in for Reds to the left corner. Twenty. Well, I'll keep saying it. He needs to make the most of this and put in a good high break here. Just get some table time, get the QRM going. Twenty-one. The thing is, if he can win this one, Phil, and make it three-two, that just puts a little bit of pressure back on to Neil to win the match. Great shot. Twenty-eight. Well, Robertson just getting accustomed to the, the contours of his chair. Oh, the other way around. Just getting used to the contours of him. It's not been, uh, not been in that chair too often tonight, so far. 36. <coughs> 37. Well, he's a stoic individual, Mark Selby. He's won two major world ranking events, both of them as a result of extraordinary comebacks in the final. 8-5 down against Ronnie O'Sullivan in the Welsh Open in 2008. 44. Came back to win 9-8 and then last season won the Shanghai Masters, overcoming Mark Williams 10-9 from 9-5 behind. We had that little bit of a scrappy start in the opener, but uh, it's certainly picked up since then. And of course, most of it's been uh, no rubbish. 52. 53. Still that slight sway movement there with Mark Selby, Phil, isn't there? And he's really, really worked on that over the years. It's not as pronounced as it used to be. Won't be happy with a shot there, though, leaving the white and the other side cushion. But he's always had that there, but it's not... You know, he has 60. worked on it. Yes, it looks unconvincing. It's certainly unconventional. For the most part, though, it's very effective. There you see again the head moving all over the place against the textbook... 61. I think this that split second when he actually delivers the cue is when he's, he does, he's still with the head, you know, but that, that was a great pot from there. He's looking at the blue here. This is a big shot to take on. If he misses this, there's plenty on for Neil. 61. Ooh, now then. Mark Selby, 61. How costly will that be? He could have closed the shot, chose not to. All players know the importance One. psychologically of making a big clearance to snatch a frame away. Robertson is a past master of this kind of thing. Eight. It's 
annoying as well when you've just done all the hard work and you're just a couple of balls away from securing the frame. And uh, well, Neil Robertson could be a couple of balls away from no. securing the match. The pink spots, but it also goes into this top right hand pocket. That's the next colour of choice. 16. Got a kick there. It's taken all the uh, pace out of the cue ball. 22. I wonder if you tried to disturb this red off the side cushion. No, just, well, he tried to. He's actually put it worse. He's put it onto the cushion. 23. Unlucky. He's tried to move it again. Well, it's OK, he's got the double kiss, but of course it will still come down to that 29. red. And it's in mid-cushion here, Mike. I just wonder whether... Time extension. After potting this red with the use of a time extension and then the black, will he try and dislodge it or will he settle for a double? I think it's going to be the former. Yeah, there's options, isn't there? could stun him behind it. Well, now then, what does he do here? Does he go for the red? 30. If he misses it, he's out of position. Does he drop him behind it? I think he'll play to drop him behind it, you know. If he gets tight to that cushion, he could win the match. Gone to move it, and that's the problem. You had to hit it. Yes, I think had he been right-handed, he might well have dropped in behind the red there, but 37. being left-handed, it would have been awkward. Right back in the frame, though. Neil Robertson, 37. Yeah, excellent break. Now he's got the snooker as well. He's 24 points behind there with 35 on. And if Mark's snookered, he's got to get this red safe. I thought it was around. OK. I think you can see some of this red, actually. Left on the side of it, as we look. Not easy to get safe though. Time extension. Yes, Mark having to take a time extension here. These are the sort of situations that we've been talking about this evening that, you know, sometimes they need a little bit more thought and care and time. Especially at this juncture. <laughs> it could be end of match for that man. You can hit it direct. It's got to get it safe. Well, it's not bad. And I can't see Neil being tempted with that one. But you never know. Again, is Mark tempted with this one? He still needs a colour off it, though. Now he's playing well. First of all, he looked at the safety. I think he's playing this up and down. He's got to avoid the double kiss. From Selby's point of view, he would love to see you. A couple of colours in awkward positions, close to cushions. They are not. All of them are in the open. One mistake from him, and it could be curtains. Well, 
Well, he's had one or two touches here this evening. No Robertson on that uh, on that side. He's snookered Mark here. This could finish anywhere. Oh, I only just avoided the double kiss. Well, he'll settle. Not bad. Good shot. Is this a turn to Mike? I think so. Well, worst case scenario is 3 1, but it could be 4 0, guarantee the points. No, I think he's already made up his mind to try and knock this in. He's guaranteed to be on the pink. Overdid it. Uh, it's one of those, wasn't it? Having to use the rest, though, this is not a gimme. Selby needs red and reasonably high-value colour. <laughs> he only just avoided the ML. He's on the blue. Why? Stopping moment there. Oof. Well, I think Mark's about to put his first frame on the board. Six. Eight. Don't discount 15. his chances of salvaging a point. Well, like I said, Phil, imagine if he makes it 3 2. Just put a little bit of pressure 20. back onto Neil to clinch the match then. The next frame obviously will be very interesting. See how which way it goes. But Mark, obviously, up here. Now he's got the fir his first frame on the board. <laughs> well, Robertson's well, still in charge. But Selby is off the mark. Traitors. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Oh, no. Vengeance will be ours. Okay, my turn to start. Am I a man? <laughs> oh, no. Am I a woman? No. An animal? <laughs> no. Vegetable? <laughs> oh, I'm another compelling insurance offer, aren't I? Oh, 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 yeah. Yes, I thought so. <laughs> OK, your turn. Am I... Dang this car. Yes. For eight weeks' worth oh. of free car insurance, chat to Churchill. A former world champion is leading the current world number one by three frames to one. Here 
in Stoke. Neil Robertson, 3-1 up on Mark Selby. Earlier on, Peter Ebden, I thought was very impressive indeed, particularly towards the latter stages of his 5-1 victory over Stephen Lee. Thank you, frame five. Neil Robertson to break. This is a Group A match. We've seen one result in this group already, up in Skegness. Ding Wei beat Sean Murphy 4-2. So if Robertson can win the closing two frames here, he will go top of the table for what it's worth. Just super. Six. Well, Mike, that's what you're supposed to do, isn't it? Leave the cue ball tucked under the ball cushion but Mark Selby found a way out of it yeah the, the, the thing is uh, at this level if they don't get the white behind the green or the yellow there's been three or four this evening seven where the players have knocked those in haven't they Daniel's had a couple Mark was a great shot there as well and uh, it's obvious that Mark's not playing badly we could say early on he just didn't have the table time but you know if he does get this one like we've said he's got half a chance to get something out of this to hit that one by a long way though. <coughs> After this, oh, Selby won't be back in Premier League action until he takes on <laughs> Ding in Malvern. On the 11th of October, Neil Robertson returns to action in three weeks' time in Banbury. He meets Sean Murphy there. I think before the match, considering it was their opening fixture in this year's tournament, both players would have been OK with a three-all draw. But having gone Foul. to three each, or three-nil, I should say, Mark Selby, four. Robertson would be disappointed now. I wouldn't be too happy with that one, either. Mark having a look at this red in the middle of the table. And he can stun down for the, the black. He might hold for the blue, actually. It's a more percentage shot for him, of course. Well, that must have locked in from his point of view. Well, let's put it this way, Mike. He can't cue that shot any better and see the red remain on the table. Neil can't take advantage either. Well, he was playing with side, but even so, that one, no one could have envisaged. Again, Mark not happy with that. Caught it far too thick. Some of his safety's been good this evening, but there's been one or two that he's just thrown in that have been not as good. Well, I was about to say, he needs to hit the blue, but 
He's on the green to the centre here. Just depends whether Neil fancies it. Well, he's never been one to shirk this kind of shot. Is he overcutting this? Yes, he is. I could tell from the alignment. Good shot, no, Robertson won. Bit of coaching next year, then. I don't know, it just seems that like Neil's just took his foot off the gas here a little bit. Just, just, just the door is ajar slightly here for Mark Selby. He's overdone that one. Mark Selby, four. And he's missed one or two at this end of the table. Ones that we certainly expect him to get. I wonder if he's got away with it though. I just wonder if Neil can just kick that in with a little bit of. Right hand side, he's bound to be on the black. He could. Oh, that could prove to be very expensive. One. It's one of those snooker cliches, isn't it, Mike, that it's a game of fractions, but there you saw what it really is. Time extension. Time extension. Yeah. Time extension. Now, Robertson forced here to use an implement. Every snooker player hates with a passion. The swan neck spider. I'm not surprised he's changed. Well, he's taking an extension, but he's still going to have to hurry up here. problems with the swan neck is that quite often a player's cue just won't fit through it. Eight. Amazing. No, Robertson, eight. Well, the standard has really dipped in this frame. Possible cross double here to the right centre. <coughs> it's quite quite warm in the uh, auditorium here this evening. Feel like it was in Skegness, and it's you know. It's boys in the UK, especially not used to that. When they go abroad, of course, in Asia and whatever, yeah, they expect the temperature to be a little bit higher, but it's a little bit sticky out there, I think, for these two lads. <coughs> and he's left this red on to that same green pocket as well. Chance for Mark here to get in then. Just too wide. He's had a few of those this evening. Too many, really, for, for him. He hasn't quite been on it, Phil, has he? One. Oh, 
Put this in the worst possible place for this black. I might just lay the, uh, the snooker. Neil and Robinson. There's one. the pod success rate. 80% for Mark Selby in frame five. He's not representative of him at all. Ninety percent so far for Robertson is about par for the course at this level. Anything below, you start to worry. Eighty percent just won't cut the mustard. Well, he's lining up this red to the yellow pocket. Great shot. The opening is looking forward to win this match. Perfect. Four. A little bit short of pace, but I think he's okay. There's a couple of reds that go to the opposite corner here. Just a little bit of side on the <coughs> cue ball. Might go into them. Oh, he's gone for position. Well, to the centre, that's fair enough. Twenty. One. He's middle pocket potting so far tonight. Robertson has been very safe and secure. And you have to be so accurate on these tables. There's just no room for error whatsoever. Well, that could have been better. <coughs> well played. <laughs> Do that. Keep all off the side cushion, though. recovery pop but I think he's in the option here to drop this in he might have a possible red to the left middle yes he has still has a chance to win the frame and the match here then 33 34. Still another good pot to the middle there. Oh, when he caught the far jaw, I didn't give that a chance at that pace. Robertson will be so relieved. Red and colour required then. And again, this has been a superb break, Phil, at the right time as well. He didn't 40. want to go into the sixth frame, only 3 2 the lead. Well, black becomes frame and match ball. 41. This to secure his two points then. Cross double to really make sure. 48. If this goes in, Mark won't be coming back to the table. 
Is it there? It looks close. Well played. Well, again, a superb break, though. It just looked like he'd lost his concentration a little bit, didn't it? Well, you know, and uh, he's got it back together again. 53. It was interesting, actually, when he potted the black to leave Selby requiring snookers. No one in 55. the auditorium clapped. Robertson looked at the scoreboard to make sure he was OK. <laughs> that is the convention normally with crowds, that they applaud when the, 58. the ball goes in to get it over the line. This has been tremendous. Didn't start off the frame well at all. Looked a little shaky. But the end game has been eye catching. Neil Robertson, 62, and the frame. The blue didn't matter with a break of 62. Neil Robertson wraps up a guaranteed victory. Can he go top of Group A by winning the next frame as well? Drivers force up the price of insurance for everyone. Wouldn't it be great if good drivers were rewarded? Confuse.com has introduced a range of insurance providers with a new way to reward good drivers. They fit a clever little device into your car that measures how well you drive. It's easy. Drivers like you could save money at Confuse.com. Visit Confuse.com forward slash good drivers today to find out how drivers like you could save money. You could be owed £3,000 or more if you are missold PPI with a loan or credit card. If you don't have the confidence or time to claim yourself, PPI Claimback are here to help. Thousands of clients have trusted us to win their case, and we've already claimed back over £122 million. And there are still billions to be claimed. Just a phone call or text can start the process. It's no win, no fee. But hurry, time limits may apply. So call PPI Claimback today and claim with confidence. Welcome back to the Bidolf Valley Leisure Centre, just north of Stoke, where Peter Ebden has made a cracking start to his return to the PartyPoker.com Premier League. He's beaten Stephen Lee 5-1, and he did so with considerable aplomb. Breaks of 80, 83 and 103 in the closing three frames of that match. Neil Robertson would love to complete a 5-1 victory as well over Mark Selby. The victory is assured, it's just a matter of by how much. And if Robertson does win 5-1, he will replace Ding Chenwei of China at the top of Group A. Ding started his campaign with a 4-2 victory over Sean Murphy, recently at the Embassy Theatre in Skegness. Mark Selby is back in the arena. And who knows, okay. at the end of this qualifying process... Thank you, the final frame of this match. This Mark frame Selby might make break. all the difference. Selby has to tell himself. Settle it could down, come please. down to frames one and lost. And this could be the clincher. Plus, of course, as always, a thousand pounds rides on it. Again, on the thick side, and it's well, it's been the safety aspect of Mark's game this evening that's let him down the most, really. One. Yes, numerical confirmation there of what you're saying, Mike.
We told you a little earlier that he won the Paul Hunter Classic, did Mark Selby, recently over in Germany. It was a battling performance. Six. He wasn't in top gear, but he just kept cranking out the victories. Seven. So far this season, Robertson has been light years away from his best. Tonight, though, so far has been a radical improvement. Yeah, signs of his coming back to his best, isn't it? We'd like to clinch this one as well, of course. 5 1 against the world number one. It would be a great victory 11. for him. Twenty. Twenty-seven. There's an interested spectator, a man who's doing an awful lot of good work in the game at the moment. Former professional Jason Ferguson, chairman of the World Professional Billiards and Snooker Association. He was a good competitor, Mike, and he will know from Robertson's perspective that was a chance missed. Yeah, yeah it certainly was. And there's been a few of those tonight from the Aussie. He really kept Mark under the cosh. He might be tempted with this red down the cushion. He could stay on the black, actually. <coughs> Dreaded bleeps, eh? He's got the cover, that's a good shot. In fact, I think he's got the snooker. <laughs> well, we might be able just to see a little edge of the ones on the left hand side. He's having to play a swerve shot around the green. Dead weight. Looks good. Well, again, that's great touch. I don't think he's left anything <laughs> to this corner pocket. Or has he? Yes, it's just travelled too far. Well, there you go. This shows you the camera angles, isn't it? Another one. Wow. I didn't like it to pop that. So 
chance here for Mark then. And again, as you already mentioned, Phil, the importance of making sure you get extra frames on the board. This could really count. It could be very important at the end of the qualifying campaign. Six. Seven. Yes, and I think that's why Stephen Lee's hopes of making the playoffs are hanging by a thread, not just because he's lost both of his matches so far, that's bad enough, but the fact he's lost them by score lines of 5 1 on both occasions. Well, no good there, unless he no. thinks about taking this red on to the right middle, but it's it's difficult. No, he's not interested. Can't blame him. Mark Salvi, nine. He's had so much success in recent years, Neil Robertson. Obviously, the big highlight was winning the World Championship in 2010. He would love to win the UK Championship, which he hasn't done so far. He would dearly like to win a world ranking event over in China. That's still to be ticked off the list. And, of course, lifting the Premier League trophy. Any of those achievements this season would mean an awful lot to him. He's got the brown to the centre, but he's just slightly the wrong side of it, actually. He could lay him behind the yellow. Neil Robertson, one. <coughs> now, Selby might be tempted here to take an extension. Hitting a red is no problem whatsoever. Hitting one and leaving them safe, that's an entirely different proposition. Looking at a two cushion escape, he's got to get this right. Oh, well, he's wow. missed it by a fraction. Miss. A miss has yeah, been Robinson called six. by a referee, Paul Collier, but there is a red on. But he needs to negotiate the cue ball, I think he'll have that put back. Can't guarantee position on the colour. Now the clock isn't in operation yet. Obviously, the 25 seconds allowed it doesn't start until all the balls have been replaced in their original positions. White was there anyway. Yeah. I think they're just queer in the position of the pink here. The white's not really a problem. What I was just saying was the pink slightly lower or higher at the table, actually. Just checking that because obviously coming off two cushions, so he, he did catch the pink. <laughs> Same again then. Needs a little bit more side this time. Well played. Excellent shot. can't second guess Robertson for having the cue ball put back but how often do we see that where a top class player easily makes the adjustment required with an escape of that nature yes yeah, so and it's Neil who's made the mistake there he's got away with it though
Well, again, recurring theme, Mark Selby catching a safety shot much too thick. Now that shot looked <coughs> simple enough, but to hold the cue ball the way he did required a really delicate touch. Given the position he's in, it looks as though an Australian will replace China's number one at the top of Group A. Barring, barring at a natural bounce off the cushion. It was big, wasn't it? He's still on this right hand red, actually, of the two, but well, as with you, uh, Phil, he did spring off that top cushion. It should be okay. Both these reds go. Seventeen. Again, he's slightly out of position here. If he takes the pink on, he might have to go around the table, the cue ball. And there's plenty of colours to hit. He's just checking the uh, the clock. He's okay with that. Well, actually, that's not bad. I'll say that, but he's uh, not quite. Oh, hang on. Keep going. Keep going. And a fraction more, that would have been perfect. 23. It's another quarter of an inch of roll on the cue ball, and he would have been right behind the red. It still pots, but when the cue ball and object ball are so close together, it's tough to judge the potting angle. The thing is, Phil, he wants to try and win the match here, doesn't he? He doesn't want to come back again to the table. He's at the table, he wants to do it here. Well played. 24. And he's gone away from the pink slightly. It'll make it a little bit more difficult from there. any colour and one more red and then Selby will need snookers. Where's the next red coming from though? Time extension. <coughs> well, looks like he's going for frame and match here. What can you say? Well, it's a great shot. He has been queuing very well this evening, Neil, and he decided to go for that one. But what a shot. What a pink to knock in. And he's on the, he's on the red, which is a match ball. Well, again, Phil, a superb break. Just at the right moment. He really has made some great breaks this evening, and he's put Mark under the cosh. When you were talking with Andy Goldstein at the start of the show, Mike, they showed the odds, didn't they? And both Peter Ebden and Neil 37. Robertson were the outsiders. They've not played like it. Thirty-seven. The red doesn't matter. The man from Down Under has come out on top, and by a decisive margin, Neil Robertson beats the world number one, Mark Selby, five-one. Wonderful night of snooker and some wonderful matches as, as well. We started earlier on, we came on at half past seven and Stephen Lee was up against Peter Ebden. We feared the worst with regards to time, but Peter Ebden rolled back the years. A wonderful performance, he even knocked in a 103 in his last frame. And uh, Neil Robertson winning by the same scoreline as well to go top of his group, Group A, above Ding Junhui because he's got one more frame and he's with me now Neil congratulations yeah I thought um, yeah I played pretty solid stuff there I made uh, 
three frame winning breaks from um, you know not from a lot really. I think Mark probably would have thought he, he'll get back to the table pretty quickly. But um, yeah, very happy with with the breaks I made. It was really tough, it was really really hot tonight in here, and uh, a lot of sort of um, bugs and flies flying around made it quite difficult to concentrate on some shots. But um, yeah, overall, you know, five one win on the um, you know in my first match uh, can't get any better than that really. A few frames were scrappy there. Does it matter? I mean, is the most important thing the win and sort of irrelevant how you get there? Yeah, I think um, like the safety was really good. I think in um, you know, a lot of the frames it was you know, a lot of really good quality safety, and um, you know it can happen when you know when either player sort of doesn't even get to, because the, the reason is is that I, I never got to attempt a shot, and neither did Mark. You know, we we both played probably five six safety shots in a row, and then the balls are going to go a little bit awkward if that's the case. So. Um, yeah, overall, you know, uh, very happy with the 5-1. Each over, overall very happy. What about your form? In a game like that, it looks like the sort of game that, more of a game of chess, that the deeper you get into it, the harder it is to predict how you're going to play. Yeah, I think in particular at the start of the frames, you know, I think, um, you know, th- there was probably sort of five breaks over 50 or 60 in the match, but um, just as soon as somebody sort of got a chance. But, um, you know, Mark's a great safety player and, not, you know, I've worked really hard on that last few years to, to become a, a really good match player as well. So um, it's sort of a little bit of a clash in, in the styles. With that in mind, do you change the way you're going to play? With regards to who your opponent is, then? Uh, yeah, sometimes. Some, uh, depends, really. You, you play a player on their merits. You know, someone's, you know, uh, a, a really good safety player and, and not a great long potter, then you can open up the balls a bit, bit more and sort of tempt them into a few long ones. But, um, you know, Mark has, has got like a near perfect all round game. So, you know, you can't really take sort of, you know, too many liberties. Mm. On paper, 5 1 looks like quite an easy victory. It wasn't anything like that, was it? No, it wasn't that easy. Um, I think, uh, you know, there was maybe one or two tight frames, but I think, you know, once I got in, once I made sort of 60, I, I won the frames comfortably, although it probably didn't quite look like that, uh, sort of when, when you have a look at the scoreline. But um, just sort of overall, you know, really pleased with how I played. And what did you make of Mark's play, just briefly? Um, I think I just I, I froze him out a fair bit. He had a couple of chances and, and missed a couple that he, that he probably wouldn't expect. But, you know, it was really, really hot in here, and it's pretty hard sort of with, with what we wear, sort of, you know, very, very warm conditions, so... Uh, Sean Murphy, your next opponent in the Premier League. Are you playing uh, like the sort of way maybe a champion of the Premier League will play? Is it too early to predict that yet? Is, is what, sorry? Is it too early to predict that you're going to do very well in this competition? Um, well, a good start is what I haven't been getting sort of in, in my previous Premier League. So 5-1, you know, is, is, is almost perfect really. So, um, you know, I go into my match with Sean sort of with a lot of confidence. And, um, you know, we, we had a, a really good match where I had to win 4-2 to, to scrape into the semi-finals a couple of years ago. And I managed to do that. So, um, yeah, you know, he's a fantastic player. Wonderful. I'll let you go and have a bath. I know you're yeah, dripping yes. wet. Thank you. Neil Robertson, everyone. Uh, just time to tell you when we're back in the Premier League. Uh, half past seven on Sky Sports 2 uh, next Thursday we'll see you for week three